it's time for everybody's favorite segment, Rapid Fire! Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. What? Pew pew? Pew pew. Pew pew. We need an air horn. Not in this car, we don't. Yes, we do. No. <laughs> no. It's good thing it's Tonawanda. <laughs> Yeah. We're not getting arrested out of here. <laughs> We've got uh, a bunch of great uh, comments on the community tab. Shit. Well, there goes the episode. <laughs> you know what? With the snow and everything that's been going on, all of this chaos, mayhem, driving around, I've had to drive in the snow, it's been awful. Mm -hmm. What I would love is zero snow. You know where there's zero or very, very little snow? Oh, I do. Yep. In Mr. Rogers Homes .com, Mr. Rogers Homes. Arizona relocation specialist. Yep. Love Sean. Top 1%. I mean, you can't He's do any better. Dude. Yeah. If you're ever looking to relocate, don't ever go to your local realtor. Like, don't go to your local realtor to help you help them find properties somewhere else. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. Just call an agent out there. Call, like, in this case, call Sean. Just get right with an agent in the area. Don't go to a local realtor. And he's realtor. from here. He understands that. Yeah, he gets you know it. I mean? He so. gets it. It's from Williamsville. Gets it. True story. Tom Galati, are the Colts now the team to beat in the AFC? Big news, they just traded for Wentz. Wentz reuniting with Frank Reich, where Wentz had the best year of his career. Until he got hurt. Until he got hurt. And Nick Foles had to bail him out. Well, what I'm saying there is Reich isn't an idiot, right? If you get an opportunity to trade for Carson Wentz, he doesn't have a bad taste in his mouth from Wentz. Is, are the Colts now the team to beat? Think of the weapons on that team. You got Pittman. It's like taking a girl to the prom. You get her corsage, you take her in the limo, you take mm -hmm. her dancing, mm -hmm. and then someone else brings her home. <laughs> and has to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Colts just traded for a player that is going to be the largest dead cap money hit of any NFL contract ever for the Eagles. The largest dead money. It's like third. It's like it's over twenty. Oh, I don't remember exactly how much money it is. That's why you don't extend the guy too early. Shh! Don't say that in Buffalo. Oh, but it I raises remember. an interesting question, right? It does. It and does are the Colts the team to beat? Do you think Wentz is better than Rivers? With Reich? Yeah. Okay, I think this is a different conversation. Rivers was going to be good. Period. I still I think it doesn't matter where he went. I still think. Now, I haven't looked at their cap. I haven't looked at who their free agents are going to be. I still think Kansas City is the team to beat in the AFC. Yeah, their they're time's running out. I, but, uh, true. Money, very true. Because of money, their time's running the out. The defense of the Bills' time is running out. Yeah, I agree with that, okay. too. you gotta, we, you got to get some fresh life in there. I know. Yep. But, I mean, that's a lot of variables we're talking about. But I think as far as it is right now, it's hard to discount because they weren't a one-hit wonder. They've been to three – AFC championship games right. in a row. Yep. You can't really get, you know, can't really dismiss that. So I still think that they are. Colts are a very tough team because that defense mm -hmm. is pretty, it's pretty nasty. All right. Um, but yeah, I think I don't think Wentz is better than Rivers. Uh, I think Wentz plus Reich is equal to Rivers. But you just have to leverage the talent more. So you're telling me that I think the Colts have enough talent on the offense. To be dangerous, regardless of whether it was Philip Rivers or Carson Wentz plus Frank Reich. I, you're, you're I think it's a combo. <clears throat> so you're telling me that Wentz, I know we want to go cut through a couple of these. Yeah. Sorry. So you're telling me that Wentz, who is having an MVP season with Reich, yep. is equal to a 40 year old Philip Rivers? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All right, I'll cut that. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, willing, I'm willing to die on that hill today. <laughs> That's fine. Yes. That is exactly what I'm I agree saying. then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, face of Bear. If McKenzie leaves, what role does his spot become? Do we need to draft a speed back? Uh, Why? So there's another guy that doesn't get any carries? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
But McKenzie brings a bunch, right? Roberts and McKenzie are both free agents. So you don't have a kick returner right now. It's Ray Ray McLeod. Stop it. Oh, my God. Just stop. That horse never gets old. I it will that. when I beat it to death. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, I mean, a speed back for a wide receiver that you use mainly in jet sweeps. I mean, how many well, carries did he have? Ten. Ten? He just didn't want a game. Like, you need a speed back for that? You I, need to start I, giving the ball to the backs you have. Well, I, think there, I think there's definitely something to be said for you don't have a ton of speed in the running back. No, right? you don't. And Antonio Williams is not much faster than Zach Moss, right? No. And people are going to hang their hat on Christian Wade and Antonio Williams, but I, I don't see those as assets that you could depend on, yes. right? So do you need some more speed? I think you could use – I think you could always use more speed. You could definitely use more speed. You could always use more speed. Um, uh, do I, I, I don't know that – but look where they got McKenzie. They, yeah, waivers. They yeah. picked him off off yeah. of waivers. I mean, you can find a guy. I don't think you, you would need to necessarily, unless you're looking at developing a guy for four years, you mm. don't really need to use a draft. See, I think that's the difference that gets lost. Mm. I mean, even you explained on a previous episode about you sign a guy, he's what? A restricted free agent, mm-hmm. exclusive rights free agent. Yep. You know, you, you keep right. him for a number of years prior to him. Mm-hmm. Gaining enough to be an unrestricted free agent. Right. A draft pick is a guy that you want to develop within your system mm-hmm. that you have control over for four right. years. Unless you wave him and put him on a practice squad, then he's... But that's dangerous. It's right? very dangerous. You, you're playing that game like they did with Dane Jackson. Yeah, yes. he was a seventh-round pick, but you keep playing this tango of, you know, we don't want to bring him up because if we have to send him back down again, he's going to have to go through waivers, you know. You may not make it. And you may not make it through waivers. Right, yes. exactly. And then so, you never sign him to the active roster but you keep protecting him on your practice squad because you don't want anybody else to take him, but you don't want to activate him either. Like, it's it's a strange game you have it's to tough. play. It's a, I mean, you're playing with house but, but I think the point is the, the Bills play that game well. They do. Other teams don't. So you can take but, advantage of other teams not you're, knowing how to handle a roster. That's how you're able to get a McKenzie mm-hmm. or a Kenny Stills, for example. Yeah, he's in the building. Example. So, uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah. You yeah. don't think so? I think that... I think being in McDermott and, and that staff and everybody, they keep their ear to the ground. You can find another guy that's put on waivers somewhere and it's a speed back like McKenzie. Yeah, I, I agree. I think McKenzie is a great story, and I like it because he was here. You, you oh, love McKenzie. Up, love McKenzie, right? But I think his skill set is replaceable. There, I said it. I think his skill set is replaceable. It do, is the person replaceable? McKenzie does a lot for you in practice plays all the mobile quarterbacks for you, plays corner, plays safety in practice. But that's what you're asking a practice squad player to do. That's not what you're asking your yeah. number four wide receiver to do. His skill set is replaceable. I don't think his deal would be huge either. No, I don't think so. No, I, think, I don't think, think so. He had to, I think, yeah. Like I, a three for ten, maybe? I think that would be. That's pretty I think modest. that would be very, I think that would be very fair for him. Trades. Current players on the roster, players on other te- uh, on other teams' roster, uh, up or down in draft scenarios. Well, we did talk about up or down in draft scenarios in another episode. But that's from uh, I Love Bacon. I mean, you got anybody that has a name that says I Love Bacon, uh, you got to call them up. Uh, players on other teams' rosters. Interesting point. I'll just mention it because the name is out there. Would you, if you had to... You have to make one of these two moves, okay? We're going to wrap in because yeah. somebody else had mentioned. You always paints me in a corner. I know. I Well, I have to. You're, it's the ADD. Um, I'm elusive. So Dan Van Cohenberg mentions you should sign J.J. Watt. Okay. And then I Love Bacon mentions you trade for other players on somebody else's roster. Okay. So let's, un- let's unpack that a little bit. Let's make some assumptions. And let's put J.J. Watt versus Von Miller for Ooh. Buffalo. Which one would be more valuable to you? J.J. Watt or Von Miller. Understand you can get them both right around the same money because Von's got to restructure, and I think everybody understands that, right? Yeah. So you can get them for right around the same money. Which one is more valuable to you, J.J. Watt or Von Miller? Two very different styles of defender. People say, you know, the pressure numbers are great, but Miller has primarily played in a variety of defensive fronts, but, I mean, he's a deadly 3-4. Right? He's a deadly linebacker in a 3-4. J.J. Watt is, has, again, played all over the place, but has played less interior line than, you know, on the end, the last the last four or five years. What player is more valuable to you? It's like the chicken or the egg, man. 
It's a tough one, isn't it? So because, but I think I, I don't know much about Miller playing without his hand in the dirt. Okay. I don't know about him playing up much. Okay. You know I mean, I, he's an athletic freak. Both the guys are athletic freaks. Both guys are getting up there. Both guys, not with, not counting the money. We're talking about the player on the field. I think at this juncture for the Bills, getting a guy with his hand in the dirt is more important than getting a guy with his hand up. Okay. Especially because a 3-4 linebacker is, is a different animal than a 4-3 Agreed linebacker. Agreed wholeheartedly. That's okay. why I mentioned. So you would be using Miller – to replace Hughes. I see that differently. I oh. think you use Miller to replace Klein or replace that nickel. You're going to restructure a guy's deal that has that much money to play. Linebacker? 60%? Well, I mean, you're, if he's going to play with his hand in the dirt, he's only playing 60% anyway. You think Watt would? I think I, Watt would play more. Mm, I give the, Watt 70% if he plays for both. Jerry Hughes led the team in snaps. He played 58% of the defensive yeah, but snaps. I think, but, but, that's, but that's normal, Mar. You can like, play him in, in, in and out, though. You can put Watt in and out. You can put him at DN, or you can put him in the interior. That's why I think he goes to 7. Okay. You stop with that. I, I, that I'm is? asking because you're yeah. going to lose Milano, right? So does getting Miller – supplement losing Milano. No, because you can't cover. No, I understand that. But does it make it easier to replace a coverage linebacker when you know you can generate pressure from the other? Because think about it, right? The way they were running the defense before, they were running two linebackers and a safety. They're yes. running Nick, right? So now we saw A.J. Klein be really effective in Rushing that pass defense. rush role, yes. right? And the defense looked really aggressive and fun in that role. Well, now you're just going to unlock that role. Right, you're gonna put Von Miller in that role instead, and now you you could still play nickel. Getting Von Miller doesn't change the fact that you could still run nickel all day. It doesn't change that at all. I'm just saying that I think you need to think a little outside the box with Miller, because yes, people are gonna want them to get pass rush with the defensive end, but those guys are expensive, and you're gonna lose Milano. That's not you're losing more guys than you're gaining at the position. So I'm not saying they should do it. I'm just saying that I think you need to think a little bit outside the box with Miller. I'm just I need a guy that plays in the box. So you're That's saying... You I can't tell whether you agree or disagree with this. I, you know what? It's weird because you're telling me I'm going to satisfy two different parts of this defense with two different guys. Yeah. So Watt would take care of... He could play in... You say he doesn't play interior much, but he could. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't make Go down. Yeah. Inside or outside, he can play inside or out. Miller is up. He's usually up. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I give him more of the Jerry Hughes type. Um, either way, you're addressing um, you're addressing an issue that has to happen, which means you need, you need pressure from the front to help mm -hmm. out your secondary. Right. Now, if you do that... Now, if you get Miller or Watt, uh -huh. and you draft a corner at thirty, uh, you're not going to see me get upset. You're going to get like the sixth corner off the board at thirty. Trey was the fourth. I'm not worried about it. But the point is this: I will trust Frazier and McDermott to evaluate a corner. They got Dane Jackson in the seventh. I agree with that. I'm happy with Dane Jackson. I agree with that. So I will trust that if they draft a guy. Which I think, to be honest with you, I think Trey was McDermott's first edge. I don't think that was a way. I think that was. They think they, they thought they could have got him. I'm going to think that that was McDermott's pick because he's Maybe. a, he's a deep. Well, he guy. just got done drafting two corners in the draft previous. Well, they, so he had. Two, yeah, I mean, but that that notwithstanding, I'm thinking if they decide to go with Watt or Miller or get either one of those, and then they draft a corner at 30, they're like, listen, we're taking care of this now, okay? Because this defense, the clock's ticking. Yep. Our offense is okay. We can do patchwork for the line. We have right. our skill positions already. Right. We need this defense to step up. Because if you get Watt or Miller and a, a, a CB2 that's actually a CB1, mm -hmm. now that AFC Championship game has a different paint job on it. I agree. I very much agree. One last question. This one was not on the community chat, but I think it's a real quick one that we could uh, we could kind of get through. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Got my question was. Oh, there's one more. Give me a minute. Yeah, caught up. Okay, uh, players on the team, on on the roster right now, 
that you can trade and get some capital that way. Draft picks, whatever the case may be. Who are your probably two most valuable players on the roster right now that Bean could trade and get assets back for? Two most valuable. Guys that you could live without. Guys that you can live without. Don't you do it. Sorry. Don't you do it. Why? Who am I trading? <laughs> I, was like, I was waiting for it. Whoops. Son of a biscuit. Dude. So credit credit where credit is due. Um, that goes uh, back to I Love Bacon's question. So players on the current roster. Star. You trade star? You could. I'm not saying you would. Okay. You could because he restructured his deal. Yep. And you took a... You, the you take it on the chin anyway. So. Are, yeah. Uh, okay, star. Star for the for the defense for the offense. I think because of Morse. I think you trade Morse. I think you could because of the bonuses. A lot of it. A lot of his stuff was in bonuses. Yeah. And he'd be a guy where prior to Watt getting cut, if the Texans were to, you know, restructure his deal to have some of that money pushed to bonus mm -hmm. and then trade. So they would have to eat some of that cap. The Bills are going to automatically eat some dead cap with Morris. I don't think his base salary is too high, right? It's an interesting – oh, God. Actually, I hate the question. Like, like I, I love that somebody posed that, but I don't know if the Bills are financially stable enough to trade away and take dead cap hits So at this point. Philosophically, the Bills got Morris because they had a young quarterback, so they wanted a center with – that was, you know, a little grizzled to help with that, right? Yeah. Do you still need that? Because at 30, you could get one of the best two centers on the board. You could. You could. And with Morse, he was the center for an MVP quarterback. Mm -hmm. So. Who remained an MVP quarterback candidate? Yes. After he left. Yeah. Right? So I think that's well, important saying, to call though, maybe out. Maybe he was saying certain things within that construct of that offense or that, you know, that Allen could pick up on. I mean, we don't know. We're not in the film room. We're not in the room of all, and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. I still like the fact that they went and did that. Yeah. Like, listen, we need the stabilizing force mm -hmm. for our rook. Yeah. I'm fine with that. But I wouldn't want either one of those guys gone. I just think right. that it, who could you trade that has value mm -hmm. other than any of your rookie picks? Mm -hmm. not those two. Um, yeah, think about it. Star had a year off. He's fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm avoiding the question. I was asking. Oh, you want me to answer it? I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Um, let's see here. Ideal Daryl Johnson, because you don't lose anything. You'll get a fifth, sixth, seventh round pick for him. You don't, you're not losing anything. He's a special teams contributor. He can play some defense for you. So, again, I think there's probably a team out there who's in the business of we need to acquire some special teams help and not burn the draft pick on it. Mm -hmm. So I think Daryl Johnson's probably an easy one to trade. Uh, it's not going to cost you anything to trade either. Mm -hmm. uh, the offense is really the tough one. I, I'm i not sure who you can deal on the offense. You know, like I, I just don't know. Um, I, I don't know who you can deal on the offense. I um, honestly can't think of anybody. I think a few teams will take Allen. <laughs> God. <laughs> Literally the city would set up. <laughs>